I was extremely pleased to receive my students' appreciation for what I've done. And of course, I want to take this award also as a recognition of the improvement of my teaching skills over the years, because this is a job that requires practice and experience. For me, what I do is quite niche, um, at least in Switzerland still, and I, I really want this, I'm, I'm deciding to take this, I guess, as a sign that um, students are interested in forensic linguistics. It's an area of applied linguistics that, you know, deserves more scholarship, and I, I think this is really exciting that students are, are so taken with it, that they, it resonated with them. So I'm thrilled, really. Well, first of all, it was a bit different um, in that it was a block course, so it was spread over three days. And with block courses, you really have to take a different tack in terms of the structure. Of course, it's, they're long days. I mean, you're, you're, you're with the group for, you know, at least seven to eight hours, usually. The main thing is keeping everyone engaged. You know, of course, that's attention spans are wane at, at, at 4 p.m., <laughs> On the second day, you know, it's, it's intense. So I tried to pull them in with real casework and have them work on real data that has been put into the public domain and is usable and, and lots of activities that, you know, make it fun. This course was, I had to design it um, in a way that would make students understand the practice behind research itself. So it was a meta course in a way. They got to understand why they have to sit there at the end of each term writing seminar papers. So in that particular seminar, I tried to give them very short inputs at the beginning and then it was all in-class activities, group discussion, um, exercises to try and grasp practically what the topic of the day is. And I think they really appreciated that side as well. I also try not to be afraid to expose myself. In this class, for example, I gave them this anonymous paper from a student that they had to grade as if they were the instructor. So I gave them what I usually use to assess their papers and they had to do the same exercise. And only at the end, I revealed that there was one of my MA seminar papers. Mm. They were terrible. They destroyed it. <laughs> Students can be the harshest critics. Yeah. When you see that you're able to inspire something in your students, mm. perhaps you have taken up a topic that they might not even heard before about it. Um, but you see that that sparks ideas, that that gives them new ways of thinking about what interests them, that is extremely rewarding. Mm -hmm. um, and also I would say that it is also necessarily complement to research activities. Mm -hmm. You can't find the best laboratory in which you can go and try to test ideas and try to see in how far you're able to distill and synthesize and clearly express all the bunch of information that you're working with, is struggling with alone at your desk. So I think that's that teaching also helps us in, in our research activities. I mean, I don't have anything to add really. You said everything perfectly. I 100% agree. I don't think I necessarily have a specific teacher from my past that really kind of inspires me, but um, yeah, I would say I did kind of a, I've picked and, and chosen different um, teaching styles and, and techniques and um, tips from, from everyone I've worked with so far, really. Um, I, I taught English as a foreign language before I worked at the university, before I did my PhD here, and um, a lot of what I, a lot of how I teach here is sort of grounded in that, those kind of pedagogical techniques that I learned teaching English. Well, I guess it's inevitable that you 
get inspired um, also by the mistakes of other people, mm -hmm. not necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I do remember that when I, start, when I started teaching and I had to teach my first class, I went to my PhD supervisor and then I went to my former professor of my minor in Italian literature and I asked them, give me, give me anything, like what do I need to know, I'm terribly scared. Um, one of them told me, don't be afraid, you're always going to find an answer to all the questions that your students are going to pose you, because then you have that fear, like what if they ask something that I'm... Mm. Uh, the other one told me, look at your watch. And, you know, as simple as these two pieces of advices are, I think they pretty much sum up everything. Be confident <laughs> and be structured. If I have to make a wish, which is a very parochial one, would be for more actual didactic courses in English and then mm -hmm. to, but that's up to me, to get more involved in interdisciplinary co-teaching. I just want to echo that really. I mean, having more of the courses in English is, I think, you know, we have a lot of international scholars now who have just moved to Switzerland and they are excluded from a lot of the, the didactic classes that are put on. So, I mean, I... It would also be helpful for us here to have things in English, um, also just sharing materials and, and I, I a lot of the times I read the list and think, oh, I wish I could do that. But <laughs> so yeah, I, I agree with that. And also the interdisciplinary aspect, um, the way that that our, our horizons could be sort of widened in terms of teaching would be just to to think it interdisciplinary first. You know we. There are so many points of connection across our departments now that there's so much potential, but we sort of just stay in our lanes and and don't necessarily think about the ways that we could work together. Um, so yeah, I, I'm I'm really excited for the potential of working with with different scholars across the the faculty. So yeah, I I, I really agree with with both parts that you said. <laughs>